Michelle Osterhout, and I'm a lot of things, as Anita just said. Um, I actually asked my friends and family, uh, some of whom are here today, to describe me, to think of a few words that they would use to describe me. And some of them said, um, loyal, empathetic, kind, honest, high maintenance. Uh, that could be a whole TED talk in and of itself. But my favorite, which stands out on the screen, I think you'll see, is badass. And I love that someone referred to me as a badass. Let me tell you why. Because a badass is someone who stands up for what they believe, advocates for what they believe, and they do it unapologetically. And I would tell you that I think that I probably am a badass. But you know, sometimes things are not always what they seem. I remember this photo very well. I actually snapped it when I was on a business call at work. And I snapped this photo and I sent it to, I don't really remember who I sent it to. There are three people that I communicate pretty regularly with during the day, and that's my daughter, my husband, sometimes my son, but he's in college, he never answers my texts. Um, he may or may not be in this room right now. Um, but anyway, or my sister. But I snapped this photo, I was on a business call, and I snapped this photo and sent it to that person. So another word to describe me is silly and goofy. So I've been known to send funny pictures, video messages, responses, jokes to my friends and family. Uh, someone once told me that I could have a whole conversation in gifts, and I can. Uh, that's just who I am. But uh, the thing about this photo is this photo depicts a time in my life when I was at my lowest. I felt broken and I went to work every day feeling intense stress and anxiety. Get a little bit depressed <laughs> thinking about it. I struggled to get out of bed. I struggled to drive to work. I found myself at times um, wanting to just pull over and throw up. And that picture, you probably can't tell that from that picture. Anxiety serves as a messenger of fear to help us adapt to challenging situations. So when I came out earlier, I was feeling some anxiety. But my body adapted. I was able to adapt. I shared with you that I was anxious. That's who I am. I share with myself often. Um, I was having some nausea. It's passed. I feel a little better now. I'm a little more comfortable in my skin. Um, but at the time that I was going through my struggles, I had anxiety so bad that I had heart palpitations that sent me to the ER twice. Both times, I was told there was nothing wrong with me. And I didn't understand it. I saw my doctor three times in the span of probably less than four months. And he said the first time, Michelle, you need to listen to your body and you need to take some time. And I couldn't. I wasn't ready. I was afraid of the stigma. The second time, he said the same thing. But I was too afraid of what people would think. The third time, finally, after the second ER visit, I realized that I needed to take some time. So we have to listen to our bodies when they tell us to adjust or adapt. So my adjustment or adapting when I first came out was to tell you how I'm feeling, take a deep breath, and I'm okay. I didn't listen to my body in a timely manner back then. But that third visit to the doctor, he convinced me. And I'm here to tell you, very scary as a school leader or the superintendent, at the time I was a principal, um, I was afraid to tell my boss, my colleagues didn't know when I left, but I took the time to take care of myself. And it made all the difference in the world. Let me explain. I took a month off of work. That's a long time. And I did the things that I needed to do to fill my cup to get myself in the space to return to work. So, look how beautiful that person is next to me in that photo. That's my daughter, Ella. 
I spent quality time with my daughter. She's sitting in the front row. Not trying to call you out, but um, she also was struggling at the time, and it gave us the space and the time to be together. I read. I read simply for the pure enjoyment of reading. So if anybody in here in this room is an educator, you know how busy you are. I don't think I read anything that wasn't a journal or a self-help book on how to be an educator, a better educator, probably in the last 10 years. I really haven't done a lot of reading for enjoyment. I read short things, quick things. I read books by my friends, Larry Day and Andrew Barada, who are here today. Um, and those are for enjoyment for me, but I took time and just read for enjoyment. I wrote, writing is very therapeutic for me. I'm a freelance writer. Um, I've written a couple chapters in books. I love to write. I also did some volunteer work with my daughter. We went to the animal shelter and just hung around the animals. Did you know, true story, you can actually go to some animal shelters and just volunteer to socialize cats. It's the best thing in the world. You can just go hang out with cats and socialize them and hold kittens. I'll tell you right now, that's very therapeutic. <laughs> Uh, so we spent some time, quality time, I took a month, and after that month, um, actually let me go back, I also had a really wonderful counselor who was also a life coach. And what we discovered was, I was struggling with this debilitating anxiety, let me tell you how it felt. So I was driving to work, and I remember feeling like I had to pull over because I was either going to be sick, or I was having such bad heart palpitations, and some of you in this room may have felt, felt this before that feeling in the pit, in the center of your chest, your heart beats really hard. I felt my heart in my throat. I felt like I couldn't breathe. It was that serious. I mean, I already told you, I'd gone to the ER twice, and I saw my doctor three times in the span of four months. But I was able to realize and discover about myself through some really great therapy and some really good rest and doing some quality things that really made me the person I am today discovering who I am and what I needed to do for myself, I discovered that I was in a place where I was no longer a fit. So my job was causing me a lot of stress, a lot of anxiety. Um, their core values and beliefs didn't align with mine. And to go to work every day to pretend to be something that I wasn't was detrimental to my health. So I took a month off and I came back to work and um, actually, go back. I went, I took a month off and I came back to work and I was happy. I was still in a place where I knew that it wasn't a fit for me, but I was happy because I knew why I was struggling and I knew that I could move on and I had the confidence and the strength to do just that. So as soon as I started taking care of myself, I feel like it manifested good things in my life. So I was true to myself. And then stars just kind of aligned, and some really wonderful things happened. So not four months after that first photo was taken, I was at an alumni breakfast at SUNY Oneonta. I'm a very proud Red Dragon, SUNY Oneonta. I was at an alumni breakfast accepting the award for Outstanding Commitment for Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion. I didn't feel like I couldn't do anything. I didn't feel like I was incompetent. I was starting to really feel myself, for lack of better words. I was feeling myself. Um, we need to listen to our bodies when they whisper. When I came out on stage, my body was whispering to me that I was a little anxious, and I was able to adjust. But for a very long time, I wasn't listening to my body when it whispered. And when you don't listen to your body when it whispers, it turns into a scream. The scream was two ER visits, heart palpitations, seeing my doctor for a third time, and then finally making the decision. So I'm here to tell you that there's a very real stigma and fear when you talk about mental health. But just like my shoes were mixed up, I was mixed up, and I got some help, and I'm better for it. I love this quote. Has anybody seen the movie Stucks? No? I highly recommend, you have, I highly recommend it. One of my favorite movies, um, Jonah Hill, who's an actor, he's an awesome actor, he's really funny. Some of the young people in the room might know who he is. But um, Dr. Phil Stutz was Jonah Hill's doctor, his therapist, and he really helped him through difficult times in his life when he faced anxiety and depression. 
And I love this quote, the highest creative expression of a human being is being able to create something new in the face of adversity. So I took some time off for myself and I sort of reinvented Michelle. I became the badass that I really should be, became my authentic self, and then achieved success. And yeah, that took some work on my part. I created that success, but I believe it was manifested because I was taking care of myself and I believed in myself. So I love this photo. This photo is me in my new school, Marketville Central School, and I am uh, at the top of the stairs. It was built in 1939, my beautiful school building. And I'm at the top of the stairway, uh, just being happy and feeling at peace with where I am in my life. So if I could leave you with anything, anything at all, is to please listen to your body when it whispers so that you don't have to struggle when it screams. Thank you very much.